This is the CIS controls presentation from the National Cybersecurity Center on secure configuration of enterprise assets and software. This is control number four. Quick talk on the controls and implementation groups. So the way that CIS uh, breaks down their controls is into safeguards. Those safeguards are put into buckets based on their priority um, in terms of how you should go about um, implementing different controls. So implementation group one is what they consider basic cyber hygiene. So you tackle those first, then move to two, then move to three. So in the most simplistic way of putting it, uh, one is beginner and three is advanced. Looking at the definition for secure configuration, uh, establish and maintain the secure configuration of enterprise assets and software. So easy there, uh, and configuration is going to look different depending on the type of device or software we're talking about. Why is this control critical? Uh, where we're looking to make sure that you update the configuration from the default because normally you think about what a vendor is looking to do is make it as easy and as seamless as possible for you to use this tool, whatever it is, out of the box. And adding a layer of secure configuration on top of that um, is what you need to do yourself because they go for ease of use versus security. Uh, and then in addition, software, hardware, always changing. Um, so being able to patch and update software as needed and where, where needed as well. Looking through the different implementation groups here. So within implementation group one, having the process um, for secure configuration, um, having a process for the network infrastructure different than um, for software and hardware. Uh, and then Automatic session locking, that's something pretty simple that you're used to before, you know, when you're using your phone and you leave it sitting out there, you can program it to, um, or change the settings to where it never turns off or after one minute of inactivity it turns off, you can do the same thing for um, laptops, desktops, all different types of devices. Uh, and then managing your firewalls on servers and user devices, um, a couple other control in here as well. Implementation group number two, uh, so any unnecessary services that are on your assets, disable or uninstall them. Um, so a couple different ways you can go about that. Um, that's a, a longer conversation, but uh, anything that's unneeded can be an avenue or a attack vector for a criminal. Couple other controls here, remote wipe, automatic device lockout and enforcing that. Um, moving on to the last of implementation, implementation um, group three here, separate enterprise workspaces on end user devices. So ensuring that the separate enterprise workspaces are used on mobile end user devices. Um, so a couple ways to go about that as well. Key concepts, you want to utilize publicly vetted security benchmarks. One example would be the CIS Benchmarks Program. You can go to the Center for Internet Security's website, find out more about that. Um, the NIST National Checklist Program Repository, um, and then updating your configurations based on industry standards and regulations. Um, you know, most compliance um, standards do check for your update and patch management policy as part of their um, assessment. And so that's something you do need to consider.